Education Coordinator for ASU, and I will also be one of your hosts today. Hi, I'm Kiara. I use she, her, hers pronouns as well, and I am the historian for ASU, and I will be the last presenter today. Okay, um, so with that, thank you for everyone coming. Um, I think we're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, our main two dishes today that we're going to be doing is mangoes and sweet rice, so an amazing combo, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just to get a little bit um, to get to know ASU a little bit, bit more, we stand for the Asian American Student Union. So um, we were founded in 1996 to better support the needs of Asian American students at FSU. Um, and basically our purpose is to represent the Asian American community at FSU and spread awareness of Asian American heritage and culture um, and improve the opportunities for the Asian community. Um, and we're also a, a part of a huge family. So we're a student government agency along with a bunch of other identity-based agencies. Um, and we also have 10 affiliate organizations, which Kiara will introduce on our next slide. So like Sneha said, we have 10 affiliates and I feel like they're really the heart of what ASC represents. They're a little bit more specific in how they talk about specific cultures because there's just so many in Asian culture. And so I'll start with the first one, which is FSA, which is Filipino Student Association. Oh wait, sorry, this is like, <laughs> no, for, so the first one on up there is HEAL, which is Health Education. Asian Leaders, which is kind of like our medical based um, affiliate. The next one is Sigma Beta Rho, which is our affiliate fraternity. It's just, it's one of them. And then the next one is um, AKD Phi, which is the Greek Life Sorority. Um, the next one is a Filipino Student Association, FSA. The next one is the South Asian Student Association, the Japanese Langu Language and Culture Association, and then CASA, which is the Chinese American Student Association, the Korean American Student Association, which is CASA, VSA, which is the Vietnamese Student Association, and then our last one is the kind of newer, um, it's a, a part of Greek life, the Alpha E, which is Lambda Phi Epsilon, which is another fraternity. Um, so tonight we are going to be doing um, our representative, since Asia, um, Asian is such a large, expansive, um, and diverse cultures. Um, so we, as trying to represent all of that here at FSU, um, we tried to get things that we see in all cultures um, and try to show it as a representative um, ingredient that is can be found all over Asia. Um, so we landed on mangoes and rice, and specifically the dish um, sweet sticky rice and, um, and mangoes. So, um, so the Philippines is one of these that we did. I've made this last night and we'll be having a video on our Instagram. Um, go follow us, FSU, A-A-S-U. Um, but so our, the Filipino dish is Biko Manga and it's sweet rice with um, sugar, coconut milk, and then you add um, mangoes on top of it. And then you have um, the Vietnamese dish, which Sneha will play the pronunciation of it. Soy soy. That, <laughs> um, which is just another version of um, make su sweet rice with uh, coconut milk and or cream with mangoes. Um, and then we have, in Japan, we have mango moshi, um, which is just like moshi, which is a sweet rice um, with a mango filling. And then we have um, Thailand and Laos, which is that. <laughs> Thank you, Google. Um, and so that's the main dish where we gained a lot of inspiration in which um, Chef Jesse will be cooking tonight. Um, and then we have uh, the Indian version, which is um, Kheer. Uh, and that is, uh, will be explained in another slide. So taking a closer look, we're going to try to expand on um, these specific dishes and try to show them as representative of all Asian uh, cultures. 
uh, and sorry, this is my slide too. Um, so we have uh, Biko Mango, um, which is a Filipino dish. It's a dessert. And uh, so you cook glutinous rice, um, depends on the amount you want. Um, and then after that, you'll cut your mangoes, dice it, slice it, however you like it. Um, and then you'll add some coconut cream or milk, and then you add it with um, sugar and some mangoes to it, and you just mix it all together. Um, and then you add the glutinous rice, and you mix it until it's all absorbed in a hot pan. Um, and then the consistency will be um, pretty chewy. It's kind of hard to explain it in like an American or like a standard equivalent. Um, but like sticky, chewy, um, but still has a little bit of bite to it. Uh, it's really good. It's not super sweet, which a lot of desserts are too sweet. So I like this. Um, a very popular variation of this, which is um, where you can buy most in stores or at least grocery stores, um, is Biko. And then you have a um, taro or um, ube, which is how you say it in Filipino, uh, or Tagalog. Um, and so the, so it has this sweet purple rice with it. Um, mm -hmm. and that's like a very more popular version. And so this is just a mango version of it. Yeah, so the next uh, variation we want to highlight using rice and mango as ingredients is in India, so am kheer. So honestly, typically you don't include mango in this. Um, and it's usually eaten just like as a plain rice pudding, but I also found some variations where people do include mango and I thought it would be cool to share as well. So basically the way that you make this is you would soak your rice and kind of like get it to absorb some of the water and then grind it up um, to make it just like smaller. So in India, we typically use basmati rice versus like glutinous rice or other types of rice used in different countries across Asia. So with your basmati rice, you would grind it up and then um, usually you roast it a little bit in the pan in ghee, which is like clarified butter. Um, that's very popular in India. And then once your rice is roasted just for like a minute, you add the milk and you add saffron, which gives it like a really unique flavor. Um, and then once the rice is kind of like cooked in the milk, you would add um, cardamom powder and sugar, and then you would mix it all together, let the milk like thicken and everything, and then cool it down. And then once it's cooled, you would add mango puree, mix it all together. Um, and you can either eat it hot or cold. So I think like if I make it without the mango, I like eating it warm, but with the mango, I think it tastes better cold, but it's really just a preference thing. And yeah, that's on here. So our next one is the mango mochi. Um, if you're familiar with like any kind of mochi, um, it's tech, uh, traditionally just like the kind of sweet rice um, paper kind of thing with the sweet filling inside. And this one's pretty much the same kind of style. So in a, you're gonna wanna take a bowl and then mix together the rice flour, cornstarch, powdered sugar, oil, and coconut milk. Coconut is a really big part of the dishes for all of them. It's just the thing that makes it a lot sweeter. And um, you can use coconut milk or coconut cream, whichever is your option. And then so you don't want to put it in a large pot with a steaming rack and then with one to two inches of water and then you place the bowl on top of a steaming rack. And then while that's boiling for a couple minutes, like start stirring the mixture in more once than more halfway through. And then the dough is going to make a stiffer kind of more matte appearance, which is what you're going to be wrapping the inside fillings with, like as traditional mochi is. So then you're going to remove the bowl from the pot and then use chopsticks to stir it. And then that's going to have to cool down. So then you're going to line a plate with the plastic wrap and then transfer the dough onto the plastic wrap and then kind of knead that dough out so it's easier for you to wrap each filling with. And then that while that dough is cooling in the refrigerator, spread the coconut, the, the coconut mixture kind of on a plate and then oil it lightly. And then you're gonna scoop a teaspoon of the dough, form it into a ball and flatten it into a disc, place the piece of mango in the center, pinch it kind of. This is me trying to explain how to make the mochi, but it'll be easier to show you, but basically just like pinching it kind of, like wrapping it and pinching it. Um, and then you'll put that into a cupcake liner and then enjoy. 
yeah, so we just wanted to highlight a couple of different um, variations and the arm cure, like a video of making the arm cure and a video of making the Biko manga um, will be available on our Instagram later, um, like this weekend or early next week. But today specifically, we wanted to highlight um, like the very traditional mango sticky rice recipe, which originally comes from Thailand and Laos. And this is kind of a general overview, but Jesse's definitely going to be going into more detail and showing us. So if you just want to go to the next slide, Ireland. And yeah, we're ready to make it. So we're going to throw it over to Jesse. Yeah. And follow us on Instagram to see that video. Awesome. Thank you all. All right, Jesse, if you are ready, we will pass it off to you. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Globe Kitchen. Chef Jesse here, back in action. Uh, I am wearing a mask today. It's a little strange, I know, but hopefully you all can hear me pretty well. I have these microphones in. Uh, it's for Laura's safety. We're working really closely together here in the kitchen, and I want to get the best close-up shots for you to see the different techniques and cutting of the mangoes and things like that. So anyways, let's get into the presentation here. We got coconut sticky rice with mango uh, from Thailand. Um, here's the ingredients out front. You're going to need some very ripe, fresh mangoes. These are honey mangoes. Um, they should be nice and uh, yellowish orange, slightly tender. You know it's going to be ripe. This one's got a little bit of green on it still, so this one maybe could use another day or two, although it's kind of tender, so that one might be okay. Uh, right now we're in the peak of uh, mango season, so this is an excellent recipe to try over the next couple weeks here. Uh, I got these uh, mangoes at Lynn's, and they've got some of the largest honey mangoes I've ever seen. They were like twice the size of this. and um, these mangoes are in particular are really good for this recipe because of the consistency of the flesh on the inside. They're very kind of creamy. There's no uh, strings in them like other mangoes can be very stringy. And it's got a nice sweet and kind of tangy, sour, tropical flavor. And also the seed in it, which I'll show you later, is very thin. So you really get a lot of um, mango meat out of that. Um, moving on, we've got some sweet rice. And um, this, you can get at the Asian store. It is a particular type of rice. And so this recipe only works with uh, glutinous rice, which it, on some packages it may say glutinous rice, sweet rice. This is very kind of, you know, it's a long grain style. Up in Korea and Japan, they have a short grain sweet rice, and maybe the Philippines too. But this is a long grain sweet rice. I think this one's from Thailand. Uh, then we also have some coconut milk. And in past presentations, I'm always talking about this Aroy D. If you're going to use some kind of canned coconut milk, this is the best one out there. It is 100% coconut milk, no additives, no preservatives. And uh, you've got this fancy little uh, top on it so you, you don't use it all. You can save it for later. And whoop, we've got some sesame seeds here that are pre-toasted, a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar. And so, yeah, this is a very basic... Kind of ingredients recipe so you really want to get the best mangoes you can this is really important for this dish to really stand out really good coconut milk really good mangoes and this is going to be one of the best desserts uh, you've ever had it's definitely one of my favorites and it's a real treat as they were saying earlier it's not too sweet it's a really delicious texture with the rice and then we'll we're going to do a little topping of some extra uh, coconut sauce and it's just it's just amazing really refreshing in the summer so one of the hardest things about this, and it's, it is a really simple dish, but one of the hardest things about this is cooking the rice properly. The sweet rice, you have to steam it. It cannot be submerged in water. So traditionally, it's um, steamed in bamboo steamers like this. They'll put banana leaves, or even here, we'll cut parchment paper and put it on top. And then you bundle it all up on top of a wok or a big pot, and you boil it to create the steam. And then uh, you steam it for about 45 minutes or so in there. Um, and then that, that's how you cook the rice. If you cook it in a pan, um, I've never been successful cooking it in a pan, but um, I'm sure it's possible. But it just doesn't cook evenly. Uh, you won't get the right texture. It's either like absorbs all the water really fast and it's super gummy 
or you know you get these crunchy spots in it too so all right so let's start with the recipe oh hold on so cheese cloth so this is uh the alternative method where everybody can make this at home really easily now and uh using cheesecloth if you want to come around laura we'll show the setup right here so instead of that uh, bamboo steamer we've got a kind of a large pot with a strainer basket in there with water that comes up right to the very bottom of that strainer and then you lay the cheesecloth in over top of all this and you're going to put your rice in there and wrap it up i'll show you that later um, so the other trick with this rice to keep it from having to steam for you know over 45 minutes to an hour is you want to soak it for at least four hours uh, overnight's good too but four hours i found really worked well too so i've got about a cup and a half of this rice that's uh, soaked in here and you can see where the water's a little bit cloudy and that's the starch coming off that i didn't do any rinses on it yet i was just gonna rinse it for you all and show you all right so that's looking good We've got a strainer i'm gonna pour the rice through the strainer Then I'm just gonna let whoops. Just gonna strain that starch off that way. If you have a bowl, you can just strain it in multiple batches of water in a bowl and strain it with your hands, just kind of pouring it out the side. You really want to get that water out of there. All right. And back over to our steamer basket that we made. And then we're just gonna pour it right in. There we go. And just gently wrap this all up. And here's the lid. We're gonna turn it, put the lid on and we're gonna turn it on high heat, start it boiling. And then we're gonna, once it starts boiling, we're gonna turn it down to like a medium low, lowish. So it's just kind of simmering and and building up steam in there and then you're going to steam it for 45 minutes is pretty safe um all right so let's come back and make our coconut sauce um let's see so it's either one can of coconut milk or if you're using a big thing like this it's about one and three quarters cup you can just do two cups a little extra coconut milk never hurt anybody this is not a doesn't have to be super precise. So one, I'm just gonna do two. Okay. And then we've got about a half a cup of sugar here. If you like it more sweet, you can add more sugar. If you like it less sweet, add less. This is definitely to taste. And then a healthy little pinch of salt. Okay. And if you're real adventurous, there's my secret ingredient here. I put a couple tablespoons. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We don't put any fish sauce in there. Fish sauce is awesome in coconut milk curries and things like that, but not definitely not for dessert here. All right. So I'm going to turn this on high, get it boiling. If you have a small pot like this, um, you have to watch out because as the coconut milk comes to a boil, it's going to want to boil over your pot so we're going to keep a close eye on this and hopefully we don't overboil it that's always adds a little excitement to the kitchen here let's turn it on high let's get it going all right so the back here i uh i got another steamer thing that i set up this is kind of a different version you know you got to be creative you got to see what you got at home and the directions that i put in there i told said like a two quart pot or something and this is like a 10 quart pot um but a two-quart pot would work if you have one of those little steamer baskets you can get from Publix and you put it in the bottom. You really don't need a, a huge pot like this, but my equipment is kind of bigger. So this is the, a different kind of strainer that I had. And you just need something that's going to keep it over top of the, the water. And um, the pot has to have enough water so it's going to be able to boil for, you know, 30 to 45 minutes without running out of water. All right, so here we go. Ooh. All right. Oh, uh, these are sticking a little bit on here. It's kind of been sitting on the back burner though. Usually it shouldn't stick too bad like this. All right. Whoop, there's a little cheesecloth thing here. 
All right, so we're going to kind of mix this together a little bit. Oh. Actually, I made a batch yesterday. And then this batch I was working on earlier today. And uh, I didn't soak this one as long. So I cooked it for 45 minutes. And you look at it, most of this is looks really good. But this is actually how you can tell if it's not quite done all the way. See the little white spots in the middle of these rice grains? That's kind of telling me that this needs a little more time. I'm still going to use it as a demo today. And I'll, I'll finish it up and get it all cooked together. But I'm kind of glad that happened so you can kind of see what it should look like when it's done. It should all be nice and clear like this. And then if it has that little white spots in it, that's that's definitely a little undercooked and you're gonna get crunchy bits. You don't want you don't want crunchy bits. All right, so we're gonna turn this all the way up and get it this sauce going here. We're gonna watch it close so it doesn't so it doesn't overboil. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Sure. So um, going back to the mangoes, <laughs> yes. how can you tell when a mango is ripe and ready to eat? <laughs> okay, so it kind of depends on the mango, the, the type of mango you have. Um, the honey mangoes, they should be one consistent kind of golden orange color. And they should be slightly tender when you, you know, if you, if you give it a little squeeze. Um, and so there, you know, there's... In, in the States, I think we have about seven different types of mangoes that you can get commercially here. Some of them are red, some of them are large. Um, you know, they, some of them will have some green on them and that's, that's okay. You know, they, they, they won't change orange when uh, they're ripe. So it really depends on what kind of mango you get. I really highly recommend getting these honey mangoes. These ones, there's a bunch of names for them too. So it's called a honey mango, um, but it's also called a tulfo. Uh, or champagne and I don't know do you all know any other names for this type of mango or is that is that I think that might be it but there, there probably could be a couple others anybody ASU you guys do you know any other names for the mangoes these types I don't I honestly like what I think of mangoes like um, I literally only know like the Indian names because like mm -hmm. when I used to go to India in the summer, my grandpa is like obsessed with mangoes. Like he will feed us mangoes every single chance that he gets. He loves feeding everyone mangoes and he loves mangoes. Here we go. Let's and there's like, whoa, there's whoa. like probably like over 15 different types in India. And so like there's ones where you can even like cut off the top of the mango and then you like squeeze it and kind of like suck the juice out of it so it's like a drink um, instead yeah. of like cutting it and eating it so there's like lots of different variations but i really only know the indian names yeah that sounds awesome i'd love to try that mango yeah, and in the states we only really have seven or so kinds that you get commercially i'm sure down in south florida there's going to be a many types that you know, might be growing in your backyard um but yeah i mean usually you're gonna look for color um and then you're also going to look for firmness if it's very firm you know that that's definitely not going to be ripe. Uh, so you want it to give a little bit and then um you know you want the color to be with the honey mangoes a nice golden you know golden color and it, it's got spots on it that's okay you know I, the other day i was on the uh, national mango council website just looking to see what they said about uh, mangoes <laughs> And so I'd recommend going onto their site because they gave a lot of specific information about each type that you can get here uh, and if you're interested. Uh, all right, so we made this coconut sauce. We just brought it to a boil with the sugar and the salt. And we are going to pour about a cup and a half or so, cup and a quarter into the rice. And we're going to break it up together. Okay. We're going to get it all mixed together real good. Okay, here we go. So this looks like it's just going to be kind of like a kind of like a saucy rice at this point, but you're going to wrap it up and you're going to let it sit 
and that coconut milk is going to absorb into the rice and it's going to become um, kind of like a, a rice cake after that made out of whole rice and then from there you can form it into kind of oblong shapes here's this one we have it's not going to be saucy at all it's going to be firm Yeah, there we go. So this is one that I made yesterday. And uh, this dessert, you wanna eat it at room temp or, or slightly warm. Once you refrigerate it, the rice becomes pretty inedible. It's so firm and, you know, it's hard to, hard to eat. And so uh, if you make a full batch of this like this, once the rice is cooled down, you divide it up into portions in plastic wrap. And then the best way to bring it back up to a warm, Temperature is just pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time until it's warm. This one took two times, so about a minute, and then it's it's ready to go. And that's that's how they do it in restaurants: is they just package it up into uh, plastic wrap and then microwave it when they when they serve it. And unless it's like a street food kind of place or a street stall where they're making all this stuff fresh, and you're just eating it that same day. All right, so this leftover coconut uh, we're gonna put back on the stove, and we're gonna boil that. Uh, just for a minute or two until it's gonna slightly thicken. And then you cool that coconut into the sauce that you put on at the end. There is so much time travel cooking magic happening today. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got, let's go into this one. I think this one actually still needs a little more time. One thing actually I just remembered and I'm seeing it on here is that these mangoes wrinkle slightly when they're ripe. So we'll open up both of these and kind of investigate to see um, how ripe this one is, even though it has that little green on it. Uh, all right, so online, uh, I saw a couple different ways to cut up mangoes. I mean, I have my own way that I cut up mangoes, uh, but I'm kind of interested today in exploring a couple different ways, if you all are you wanna get through this to see what the best way to cut a mango is. And so here we go, I've got a peeler. This is gonna be my first try with a peeler. I've never tried to peel a mango, um, but I'm gonna give it a shot. These are really pretty thin skin ones. And so, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty satisfying. So the part of the mango that I want to use right now, so I'm gonna peel this half. The seed goes through like this, not like this. It goes through lengthwise like this, and it's a long kind of same size shape or same shape as the mango, but just smaller on the inside. And so we're going to peel this side. All right. And so this, this technique, actually, we're going to use, we're not going to have any mango we're going to waste, which I really like using every single kind of edible part of the mango here. All right. So yeah, you could use a peeler for this. You could use a knife for this. If you're gonna use a knife to peel it, you want a nice thin knife, maybe a paring knife. Um, so let's see here. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna cut right along the stem there. And I'm gonna feel with the edge of the knife for that seed. Yeah. And I'm gonna cut right along the edge of that seed. All right, and so from there, you keep it right on the mango and use the seed as a cutting board. All right. Whoop. That's kind of harder than it looked, or than they made it look online. I was like, oh, that's a cool idea. And then we can go ahead and flip this over and arrange it down here. Whoops. Maybe I didn't cut all the way through right there. All right. Well, I don't know about cutting the mango on the seed. A nice idea, but I think I like cutting the mango on the cutting board a little better. But once you cut it, it is pretty slippery. It's really hard to kind of manage it. So I can see where oops, keeping it is, you know, not moving around that much is a is an advantage. All right, so from here we are going to drizzle a little sauce. I don't like it saucy. Okay. 
And then just a little sprinkling of some toasted sesame gives you a nice little crunch and toastiness. And that's the dish. I'd say eating this with a fork is kind of nice because you can kind of stab into the coconut, or sorry, the mango and scoop up the rice all in one bite. Um, Laura tried some yesterday with a spoon and she dropped one of her pieces of mango on the floor. So that was a little disappointing. <laughs> okay, so the other half of this mango, let's see what we got here. Um, the other, the, so this is the usual way that I do it. And I think I'm definitely gonna start peeling my mangoes on the mango is my way would be to cut it with the skin on. And then from this point to peel it, you have to cut it into quarters. And so you're gonna get smaller pieces of mango, which is okay, but you don't really have a choice about it. You gotta get smaller pieces of mangoes. And then from here, you use your thin knife to cut the mango off the peel. So. Uh -huh. The advantage of being a chef and doing this is that later on I get to come back and score a little bite of mango. But then the customer is gonna miss out on a little bit of mango there. So I can see where peeling is gonna be the better option. Um, but from here, definitely cutting on the cutting board's easier. But to pick it all up, you gotta pick it up with a big knife. And then place it on there. I can definitely get it to look better that way. Um, all right, so let's just cut into this one just because I'm interested to see how ripe it is. These both look really ripe. The first one was nice and ripe to begin with. Actually, let's peel it. Oh, no, this is looking pretty, pretty good, I think. I'm gonna have to definitely taste it to find out. But the only thing, if, if they're not quite you know, all the way ripe, they're just gonna be a little more tart than they are sweet. There's still gonna to be tons of flavor in these guys. And you got that sweet coconut sauce, um, you know. So it's also kind of personal taste how, how soon you eat your mangoes, really any kind of fruit. I like my mangoes a little bit tart. All right. Jesse, we have some concerned uh, commenters who want to make sure you're actually going to eat all the mango and not <laughs> and not let oh, it go waste. <laughs> certainly, certainly. I'm not the type of person to let a delicious mango go to waste. So definitely not. Um, this honestly, this happens to be my wife's favorite dessert. So I'm going to bring her a little bit home. I'm sure Lara will take one home, and um, yeah, we'll we'll find a home for everything. All right. Oops, you kind of twist it up. It's okay. Yeah. It is hard to handle once you cut it because it is so slippery. I need another plate. And just a plug for AASU's Instagram. I know Kiara made a video on another way to make um, this same dish. And I believe you did the mango differently, like cutting it differently, correct? Yeah, so I definitely had the stringier mangoes. <laughs> I'm looking at mm -hmm. these like, oh my gosh, these are so much nicer. But I did like basically kind of have to chop them in half and then chop them kind of into a checkerboard kind of um, look and then peel them off of the mango. Mm. Okay, yeah, I can show you that one too. If you're all interested. Great. Yeah, like mm. that. <laughs> well, here, I'll do a whole nother half over here. All right. All right, so checkerboard, you leave it the peel yeah, on. Yeah, leave the um, skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do a little tic-tac-toe cut here. Maybe a little more cuts than that. Uh, that's how uh, my Lola does it. Just that yeah. one. Yeah. This one's a little, let's see yeah. how we get the edge here. I'm gonna cut my fingers. This one's definitely a little dangerous, maybe. <laughs> there we go. 
you and can you sometimes scoop, scoop it out with a spoon too and if you don't oh. um open it like if you leave it in the bowl kind of look you can like just scoop it out kind of like an avocado aha oh. uh -huh. that's a good idea very cool there have been comments in the chat um saying that as well <laughs> all right there we go more cut up mango all right so I think we've discovered today that the peeler works well on the mango and I'm definitely going to use that in the future. Um, I also want to quickly plug an event we're going to do next Wednesday. Um, what's it called again, Laura? Sweets. sweets. Yeah, we're going to do sweets and streaming uh, with the ASLC. We're going to, uh, well, I'm going to present a, a special New York cheesecake that's very near and dear to my family. I'm going to show people how to make it and then they're going to have uh, some discussion and then we're going to move into watching uh the spider-man into the spider verse movie uh as a group so um please check that out and um yeah fsu summer nights is i guess the the website yeah or you google it or whatever. all right so anyways uh thanks for joining us today uh it's great to be back uh hope you all enjoyed this and uh thanks to asu for the great presentation um I will see you all next week. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse. We really appreciate it. And thank you again to AASU for, um, for joining us today. But before we go, I did want to ask.